Hi, Don Catalano here from iOptimize Realty. We're here at Honda Jet's facility. They took care of Baby Blue. That's our corporate plane, our beautiful Honda Jet Elite. Uh, they did a fine job of maintaining it. The people here at Honda Jet Service are absolutely terrific. Today, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough, tell you about some of the external parts of the plane you might be interested in. So come along, and this will only take a minute or two. So right here, we have the pitot tubes. Now, the pitot is a French word. There's a lot of French words in aviation. People don't realize that right after the Wright brothers invented the plane, the French were right behind us. They're certainly uh, into aviation. They were then. So there's a lot of French words, cockpit, pitot, aileron. I'm going to show you the ailerons. Those are French words. So this is not only a pitot tube, but it's, it's what's called an AOA or angle of attack uh, receptor. It's the probe. Inside, we have a computer that tells us our angle of attack. Now, why is that important? Well, I'll tell you, the big boys, the Airbuses, the Boeings, the some very sophisticated corporate jets, like this baby, have angle of attack indicators because it tells the pilot critical information, tells us when we're getting close to the stall speed. And you might have heard, you know, stall, and you're thinking of like your car engine. Well, it's, you know, the, the engine's knocking and then it's stalling. In aviation, it has nothing to do with the engines. It has to do with the airflow over the wings. And we have to have enough airflow over the wings. And normally we would. But if you pull the nose up really hard, and I'm talking about super hard, uh, or we're in some kind of angle like that, or extremely uh, steep turn, and then pull the uh, uh, the nose up, you could run all run out of sufficient airflow of the wings. Now we don't normally do that. We're not going to practice aerobatics in this kind of plane, but the sensors would tell us that in advance. So this is a very sophisticated uh, device, and we have more than one, and that's. One of the great things, when we were looking at the Honda Jet, we did our due diligence. One of the things our corporate clients know us for when it comes to real estate, no one does more due diligence than we do. Well, we spent a year doing the due diligence on this plane versus the competitors. We chose this plane. And it's because of this different systems and redundancy. So this is the PTOT tube, but not just the PTOT tube. It is the AOA indicator. So now we've talked a little bit about that. And for the pilot types, they'll get it. For the non-pilot types, I'm giving you a quick education. Over here... This is our ice detector. And what's so slick about this Honda Jet, and by the way, I don't sell Honda Jets. I don't want to sound like a salesperson. I'm a user, <laughs> but I am impressed with this plane. And what's so slick about this is it detects the ice that might accrete on the wings in winter conditions uh, or cold enough conditions. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, winter. And when it does, cameraman, if you would come pan this way, when it does, now, one of the slick things about this Honda Jet, just like Boeing's and Airbus's, is it heats up this metal surface. This is called a hot wing, and this is very high end. And what that does is the bleed air from the engines comes through here when that signals it to do it, and it heats this up to about 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. That is pretty darn hot, and ice will not adhere uh, to this wing when it's that hot. The body of the plane is made of carbon fiber. Now, why is that important? Well, it makes the plane lighter, makes the plane faster, makes it more fuel efficient, makes it greener also. Burn less fuel, you're a greener kind of plane. In addition to that, carbon fiber is 10 times stronger than steel. And what that allows this plane to do is actually, it's a pressurized plane, just like an Airbus or a Boeing. And the way pressurization works is planes are really a vessel, right? They're really um, a long vessel. And when you close them up, they're airtight. And the plane then pumps in air. That's the pressurization. And the stronger the fuselage, the more air you can pump into it. The more air you can pump into it, the more us humanoids feel we're closer to the ground. So this, this puppy flies normally at 43,000 feet. Yet the cabin at 43,000 feet, if memory serves me, is about 8,000 feet, give or take. And, and down lower, in the, in the high 30s, the cabin will be about four or 5,000 feet. That's all. And what does that do for us physiologically? Well, we're not tired. That's very important. Uh, coming forward, we have a baggage compartment. We can store 200 pounds of bags here. Uh, coming forward a little bit more, this, this is where the radar is. Now, we have two forms of radar. We have what you might get on your iPhone or your iPad uh, from the satellites. That's called NextRad radar. We're all familiar with that. In addition to that, but that's beamed down from satellites, and there's, there's a little bit of a time delay. People might not realize that, but there is a little bit of a time delay. The radome on here, which is completely digital, and this is a very uh, 
state of the art uh, planes, state, everything, the avionics are state of the art. The radar in here is down to the millisecond. There's no time delay. So we use next red all the time to see where the storms are. We can see where the storms are throughout the, the country, um, let alone along our route. Uh, but sometimes you need to see the storm that's 10 miles away, 20 miles away. And let's say you're approaching an airport and you want to land there and there's a thunderstorm. Uh, you t you're not going to land if the thunderstorm's right over the, the runway, but maybe it's 15, 20 miles away. You want to turn this puppy on and you get to the millisecond accuracy. You know exactly where that is. You know it's then safe to land. So as we're coming around the plane, people often say, well, what, what, what is this? These, these tiger teeth. Well, actually, th that's feeding element. Is, uh, these, these, uh, the pilot and co-pilot windows are uh, electrically heated to prevent ice uh, accumulating on them. And here is our second PTOT, uh, 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 PTOT tube and angle of attack indicator. Here's a third backup. So we have three. Uh, this has two main computers, pilot and co-pilot, uh, driving the plane, giving us, well, I shouldn't say driving the plane, giving us, the pilots, the information we need to drive the plane. And, uh, of course, there's a very sophisticated autopilot, which we use. Um, but we have redundant computer systems. And then there's a third backup computer system. The plane can fly and supply the pilot's information with any of the three. Um, so uh, here's the second ice detector. And uh, what's good about this is one can fail and the other is uh, operative. And the computers will work that out and know that one is failed and one's operative. And then you can still fly through the ice to get to the service center uh, to get that one that's failed fixed. And I had one fail. It was no big deal um, because we had the other system and I was able to fly it down here to Greensboro with a Honda jet is made and the nice people in the service center fixed it, replaced it. So coming around, let's talk about uh, the inside and uh, we'll do another video inside. Inside, uh, the passengers just push a button and they can control the window shades. The passengers can also control a 24-speaker system. You often see the speakers. They're, they're built into the beautiful leather uh, inside. You don't see them, but you can Bluetooth to them. It's a beautiful sound system. Now, let's, let's come around and let's talk about the engines. These engines put out about 2,000 pounds of thrust, which is a very good thrust-to-weight ratio. And it's just terrific. This plane climbs... On a standard day, and you pilot types will know what I'm talking about, standard day. On a standard day, we'll climb at almost 4,000 feet a minute. To put that in perspective, I think a Lear, a Lear Gen 60 climbs at 6,000 feet a minute. So this 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 pu a puppy does climb very fast, and she goes pretty darn fast, too. What it gets known for is these beautiful winglets. And what these winglets do is they actually increase the surface area of the wings aerodynamically. So that, that lets us go a bit faster. Let's just take off on shorter uh, runways. Uh, the other thing that the Honda gets known for, and it's a very functional thing, it's not just beautiful, is mounting the engines on the wings. Now, why is that functional? Well, what that does is it gives us more room in the cabin. When I compared this plane to others in its class, I found that four big 200-pound guys could sit facing each other in the back, and our knees weren't touching because we had about an extra foot and a half of, of, of length. And there's also a, a, a bit more width. It's a, it's a more comfortable plane. It's also quieter. There's less noise and vibration. The Honda Jet is actually known for being very quiet. It's, it's very easy to carry on conversations in the back. This over here is a, is a speed brake. And what a speed brake does is when I have to go down fast, and there's times when I have to do that to fit in. Sometimes air traffic control will hold you up high because they're working a lot of traffic. Let's say you're going into Boston Logan. And they say, okay, now it's your turn to come on down, right? And sometimes you have to descend fast, but you can't speed up. So I flip a button and these open up and it allows me to significantly go down without speeding up, so go down, uh, descend in altitude without speeding up. So very handy. And what's neat about them, they don't cause any noise and vibration. The passengers won't even know that I'm doing it. And it's a very good tool for me, the pilot, to use. We have a humongous baggage compartment. And I've seen it demonstrated by Honda Jet. They could get six golf bags in there and, and then additional uh, luggage on top of that. So you could take a bunch of your golf friends or you could take your family with all the accoutrements. And I'm a father, a proud father. I can tell you, we take a lot of stuff when we go somewhere. Or you're taking 
uh, a bunch of business clients. We take our clients. Of course, this is a corporate claim. We take our clients uh, from point A to point B to go see sites. It's one of the advantages of this claim. And it's a unique benefit that we can give our corporate clients is we could go and see multiple sites in multiple states even and have our clients home for dinner. And if it's an overnight, they don't have to worry about uh, can they store their beds. We can store up to 400 pounds of beds. Plenty. One of the other features that one day going to be I'm sorry, there's a clean tape in there. So I just don't close me. The inside clean, we have a potty, a really nice flushing potty for our, our client. And we even have a sink with running water, mirror. Um, it makes it comfortable if you're going on a trip and you're worried, you know, does it have a potty? I'd like to say we have a better potty than most airlines. Of course, it's got uh, fully closing doors, top of them, very private. And so uh, that's. Pretty much it uh, about our beautiful Honda Jet. Oh, I did tell you about French words. These are ailerons. This is what pilots use to steer the plane. Believe it or not, when we turn the yoke left and right, uh, this is what goes up and down and that steers the plane. So French word here, ailerons. So it's been Don Catalano. It's been my privilege to tell you a little bit about our corporate aircraft. We use this to help our clients get home for dinner. Thank you and have a great day.